Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, this modality can help you heal and feel better. I'm talking about massage. So can Reiki. So can having a life coach Mm -hmm. help you move life forward. What if you were to take all of those and get all that help from one person? She's right over here. I've never seen anybody that does all of these from massage therapy to life coaching to Reiki. It's like a 360 approach to helping you heal and move your life forward. She is Katrina Fritz and she's back with us. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm great, Steve. How are you? I'm good. I I have gone to, and we sh- I shared this with you last time we got together, three different people for all of this, you know, massage okay. therapy, then somebody for Reiki, then a life coach. I think it's amazing that it's all in one because you get to know that person, what their goals are, what they're looking for. Even on the massage side, we have goals with massage. You know, somebody goes to you for a reason. Okay. Yes. They're part of it's to relax, but mm-hmm. there's certain things they're, they're trying to achieve. Right. Yeah. So uh, for example, I had a client yesterday that I've been seeing for a while. I saw her initially for massage, right? Because that was what she viewed my services as at first. And so, you know, when I was in massage school, they're like, don't talk to people unless they talk to you and, you know, keep, but I'm me, so I can't not be me. So I'm, if somebody starts talking to me, I'm going to ask some questions. And so as we were talking, you know, she was talking about how she, you know, has struggled with her weight. And I'm like, you know, maybe the Flinders program would work for you. Maybe that's something that you would want to be interested in. So we, we then in the new year did that. And, you know, I've been following up with her. So I, you know, the first the first session is like two hours long and then there's 45 minute follow-up sessions. So what we found to work is the follow-up session to talk about the stuff that's going on with her, you know, the goals that she wants to set, how she wants to be, and then do an hour massage with, with Reiki. So the Reiki came last, the Reiki was the last thing that we did together, but it was really kind of wild last night i mean she was like that was some crazy energy but like <laughs> she, you know we talked about it and she's made a lot of strides and changes in her life and she's getting to the point of making the the final change like going to the surgical route which she had looked into for like three years and mm-hmm. had been afraid to move forward to do it and now it's real and she's like kind of backtracking i'm like look you need to just check in with yourself and figure out, you know, try the lifestyle, see if you can do this. I said, because once you go over that threshold, you're, you've done it. You you can't go back. You've made an altering a life altering decision. So, you know, see, try it out. You have two months. That's good. Try it out. See what, see what that's going to look like. You know, don't drink when you eat all those things. And then see if you can do that. If you can actually visualize yourself doing it because you will, you are mourning, you're mourning the loss of your normal life. But after, so we had all that conversation, right. And then got on the table and I was like, do you, because I knew what we had talked about, right. And how she was talking about mourning the loss of food and, you know, cause you, you're eating, but you're not going to be eating the same way that you're eating when your stomach is normal. And, you know, it's, it's different. If you want it to work, if you want to use it as the tool that it is, you have to alter your lifestyle and it has to become a new way of being. So I I said to her, do you want to make, to just eat to survive and not eat to live, not live to eat? That's, I guess that's the phrase, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, yes. I'm like, okay, make that your intent. And we're going to we're going to do some work. So, you know, it was, it was, so at the end, she's like, wow, that was some crazy energy. I'm like, well, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I think you're going to do it. Right. I mean, she's, she's very smart and determined. And as long as she can get past her fears, she'll be fine. Well, somebody like you with somebody like her, it's the perfect storm because 
you can advise her with the energy and help her with that. But there's the element of the life coaching, working her yeah. through it and getting this prepared for a change. And I'm not minimizing her situation at all, but isn't it literally lifestyle changes? Even if you got divorced, all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're alone. Yeah. You've got to figure that some, for some people, that's, that's a big challenge if they have fear of abandonment and now their yeah. life partner is gone or passing of somebody, right? So that that's a big change for somebody as is her big change. It's a different type of change. But if if you set the intent and your mindset is there, do you feel that you can pretty much pretty much handle mostly anything if 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 you've got the right if you've got the right uh, people around you and yes. the right mindset? Definitely. I mean, it is a lot, I, you know, I was, I was thinking about, you know, my journey and why I can relate to people so much because God, I've done like every, every, you know, railing against it's unfair. It's, you know, why me? I've, I've, I've moaned, I've complained, I've been depressed. I've been whatever, because I'm like, I'm only I'm only 27 and I have a herniated disc. This isn't fair. I, you know, I, I didn't have any money and didn't get to do what I wanted to do. It isn't fair. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so I've been there. Yeah. I've done that. I've learned, you know, you have to accept things as they are. You have to take responsibility and accountability for where you are because, you know, you might have been dealt, you know, I, I was dealt a hand where I didn't have a lot of money or means or resources, but I made choices. You always have choices yes. and you have to take accountability for the choices that you make. And, you know, sometimes I made really good ones and sometimes I didn't. And sometimes those not making good choices landed me in places where I was really depressed about. So, you know, once once you can take ownership and really say okay i'm taking control of what i can control and i'm going to i'm going to set my mind on doing this and i'm going to i'm going to imagine that this is going to work out it might not work out so this is the thing so you know i it's going to work out but i can't demand the results at the end I can't say like, it's going to work out. And in five plus years, I'm going to have X, Y, and Z, and it's going to look like this because most likely it's not going to look like that. Yep. You have to be open to whatever evolves is what it was meant to be. And you that's, know, you that's the most universe. Likely get it. That's the universe at work. And you're hundred percent right. Yeah. I've talked to people that have had the same, same thoughts, same mindset, and they, they were looking to change your life and they had this vision. Let's say it's a business. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to, this is what I'm doing. And it turned out to be completely different. Mm -hmm. It was all good, mm -hmm. but completely different. But they realized overall, that's the way it was supposed to happen. That's the, the plan of the universe. That's, 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 that was like you say, what was meant to be. I want to go back to what you said in terms of choices. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Everything, everything is a choice. Yeah. Every, uh, even if you're dealt a, uh, bad card, mm -hmm. um, let's say even medically, yeah. how, how you react to it is your choice. So you do have a lot of choices. How do you make the right choice? And I mean, you, how do you, and, and we all have made yeah. choices that weren't the best. <laughs> and I can think back even like 25 years, I made a choice. Yeah. Um, I was standing I was married. I was standing with my daughter who was three at the time in my arms and looking at a big field and with the builder and we're just the house going to be built. And I'm like, I'm inside. This oh is yeah. A, the gut. <laughs> this, is a, this is a bad idea. And he's like, well, you know what? The weather looks like it's going to be warm. We could have this done. This was, I'll never forget. It was October. They broke ground on Halloween. It was a warm winter. Uh, moved in the week of January 1st wow. and a year later I was getting divorced, hmm. but the gut was telling me it's a bad idea. And I didn't really have any major signs. It was just 
not feeling right, but yeah. you know, and and that, uh, you know, reasonably, I'm already in. So it's like, all right, let's just keep going. And but that was a choice. I I didn't listen to what was inside. So how do you listen? What's your, how do you trust your gut, your intuition, all of that? Well, I mean, like I said, it has been a long journey of trusting the gut. You know, so those moments of like I I I mean, not relate in that exact instance that you said, but you know, where you're really invested in something, right? Right. Yeah, you great have word. Put Thank a lot you. of time and effort. You care about whatever it is, you know, the person that you're with, or you know, you really don't want to let go of that. So it, you follow the steps, right? You just go along the path you, that you, you feel has been laid before you and don't acknowledge the, the warning signs, the little whispers or the little nudges or the whatever that come up that, you know, you know, you don't even take the time to delve into them or stop long enough to listen to it. Like I, when I was in college, I never wanted to be alone. My, my one friend called me her shadow, but I swear I didn't want, I didn't want to hear anything that was going on in my mind or in my body. Like, I didn't want to think about it. I just wanted mm -hmm. to just be with someone else and have them fill my, my space or my being with whatever was going on for them and not mm -hmm. have to deal with me. Like that was, that was my version of escape at the time. Wow. So I, I, you know, I had learned, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say to my clients, you know, do you want to listen to the small whisper and the nudges, or do you want to wait for the two by four and then the four by four and then the Mack truck to hit you? Like, do you want, do you, cause you'll, you'll get spoken to, but if you don't stop to listen, it will get louder in different ways. For me, it was my body just, you know, breaking down because I was in a field that I knew I didn't like. I didn't know how to get out of it. And it always seemed to be that it was my body breaking down. That was the impetus to make me finally say, well, okay, I have to shift out of this role. I have to do this. But, you know, you, you, I had kids, I had made promises to my husband that we would put them through college. So I knew what I was, what was expected of me. So even mm -hmm. though I knew in my gut, I overrode it, you know, and tried yep. to find at that time, it was kind of like a negotiation with the universe. Like, I know, <laughs> yeah. I know this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. But this is the deal. I live here on planet Earth, and this is what I agreed to when I got married to my husband and had children. So we are going to do this. And then the universe is like, well, guess what? COVID and your kids are out of school and you're going to do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, was, I was getting sick again. I'm like, okay, okay. Okay. And then COVID and everything, I'm like, holler enough. I hear it. So now I do listen, like, you know, you standing there in front of the groundbreaking for your, your house to be, you know, I, I do pay attention to my gut. I do when I, I'll be driving and I'll hear some, like, I say, hear something, you know, like I get an impression of someone or I hear a name or I, you know, I call them. I, you know, because generally speaking, I'm supposed to do something around that. I don't necessarily know. I, that's the thing. I trust that whatever I'm being guided to is what I'm supposed to be doing in that moment. And I don't really question. I just do it. <laughs> you know, and there were moments that I, I was always like that, but there were moments where I was more open to it and less open to it and more shut down and more open. So I would say now though, I'm pretty much just, I'm here for it. Whatever, whatever I'm told to do, I'm going to try to do it. What's it feel like for you? When I'm doing what I'm supposed to do? No, when you get uh, something. So when, when I get something, oh, yeah. well, it. Uh, okay, let's do, let's it do depends. this. It depends on what it is. You have a choice. 
I got to pick this. You have to pick this or you have to A or B. Oh. And you can't make a decision. You're thinking about it. And, you know, whatever you, however you want to say it, you, you, you meditate on it. Uh, you just wait for a feeling. What, what do you get? I, so I don't really, I don't, I don't really dwell on things too much. Like it either feels good or it doesn't. Okay. Like, you know, so if it's something that is like a no, it would be like feeling tight Heavy. in my chest or my stomach would be upset or, you know, like, so I'm, I'm, you know, being nervous isn't necessarily to me a no. It just means that I might be responding with my ego at the moment and thinking, Oh God, like when I had this opportunity to do this, I was like, Oh God, no, I, I no, no, don't want to do that. But it was like, that was not what my body was saying. My body was like, Oh yeah. Like we're excited about this. And I'm like, Oh no, Oh no, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, you can have that conflicting feeling in your body, but you have to discern which is, spirit universe, whatever you want to call it. And what is your actual mental process that might be blocking it? So can, can we, can we look at that for a second? Cause I think it's a great example. Uh -huh. So inside you, it's like, yeah, do, 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 do a podcast. Go on. This, mm -hmm. be great. this is what you really, you want to do this. This is saying, no, 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 no. Do you think that your logic and your mind is saying don't and I'm going hypothetical here mm -hmm. because maybe you did something when you were a kid and it, maybe you were embarrassed. Maybe it didn't feel right. Um, oh. People yes. said something, <laughs> made funny old, but you don't, as an adult, you don't know what it is. You're just yeah. like, you know, why are you saying no when this is saying go? But what I'm getting at here is the subconscious. It was something was put in your, everybody subconscious. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of limiting you to not moving forward with whatever it might be. Yeah, no, I mean, I, cause I, I, I look, I tell people, you know, I tell people, well, what did you do when you were little or how did you feel? Or, you know, I I'll say things like, you know, whose voice are you hearing when you hear that? I, I look back on my own life. Like I went door to door. I was probably like four years old, door to door selling scribbles. Why on earth I was doing that, I have no idea. And that was not necessarily a bad experience. But then when I hit like middle school, middle school for me was the time. Like, so mm -hmm. like I was much more open and free before I, my parents divorced. I think it was like, a, you know, how everyone has that kind of delineation in their life, like pre, pre-divorce, post-divorce Katrina for, you know, or before 9-11, post 9-11. Like, you know, it's kind of sure. like those major traumatic events, like my parents divorced, my grandfather died. Like I no longer was, was carefree and worryless. Like I had concerns and I worried and I, you know, those things impacted me. And I don't think I really realized as much how much it impacted me until like later in life yeah but yeah so yeah yeah you definitely I, i'm, I'm with you. always a source there's always a source from where that comes a hundred percent and you know determining it well that's the key that's the challenge uh i have to believe that when you work with somebody on a coaching level maybe even the energetic level too mm -hmm. a lot of this some stuff comes to light and you understand it and listen, my dad passed when i was 21 suddenly I you know I'm sure I've got stuff you know from that that I haven't unpacked yet. I think back to it. I think of how it could have impacted. I don't know. It has to be. You know, these are you know, we say the word trauma. The trauma yeah. could be somebody said to you when you were seven years old. Yeah, you 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 went in front of the class and you did a presentation and people made fun of you. Well, that could be inside of you. And that's why right away you say, oh, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's, that is a trauma. It's a smaller one, you know, passing of a relative, bigger one. They all impact us somehow, some way. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. You, you mentioned the person before. Um, 
the woman that was going through some challenges. I'm just going to pivot back to that for a moment because you help people with chronic conditions, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So and my nursing, I mean, my nurse, this is where my nursing background comes in. Yes. Because you know, I'm talking to her, she's like, Oh, you know all the things. I'm like, Well, yeah, because like I know medical stuff. Like it's not just I, you know, or you know, she was she was talking about her thyroid and like, you know, I I do. Oh, okay. So like an example. And I mean, as a massage therapist, you know what a, a normal body, like in different what normal variations of a body would feel like, right? But I was I was working on someone for a Reiki session, right? But I, I kind of, my Reiki sessions are kind of like a mini, mini massage and Reiki together, just because like I've talked, I, I'm very hands-on touchy empath emp empathic, but so I was working on her throat chakra and I'm, I'm palpating like her and there was like a nodule or something. And I'm like, you need to go to the doctor like there's something there that is not supposed to be there. Like women don't have Adam's apples. That should not, that's not normal. And she was already there because she had got news from something else that she was concerned about. So, you know, hmm. it's not always great to be the, you know, and it might be nothing, but it definitely was something. I don't know good, bad, or whatever, but it could also, you know, it could have been something that related to what her other condition was. Sure. But at least so, you pointed it out. And that comes from your medical background. Yeah. Uh, you bring back a, a, a memory. I don't think it was like maybe seven years ago. The guy's name is Tarek. He okay. flipper flopped the TV show. He did the, used to do the show with a, with his wife. She has blonde hair. They kind they since split up. So they're all doing their own shows. Right. Right. But when he was, like prime doing the show with his wife, somebody noticed his throat, a nurse mm -hmm. and sent it in and said, Oh, really? Yeah. There's somebody watching. I eh, just something I want just want, you know, that looks a little odd. You might want to check. And I don't know exactly what it was. Uh, might've been a thyroid, might've been thyroid cancer. Um, he got it taken care of just because of that. And he's fine today. Yeah. That's so, you know people say, and and you know what now that i'm thinking about it and now that you said what you said as an empath before and energy uh -huh. uh, maybe energetically somebody picked up on it saw it because you know, listen you can have a little thing here and a little thing here it doesn't mean it's something but yeah. it, it was strong enough for this person i guess energetically uh, even as an empath where she and she you know, she knew you know, yeah, she's a nurse i'm telling you most right. nurses it you know are Yes. Empathic. That's yes. why, yes. you know, yeah, we're oh, the yeah. most trusted profession because oh, yeah. we're there for a reason. Even more than doctors sometimes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's true. I, I know somebody um, who's a nurse. She's a private nurse and she would need to take a day off every two days because she would get so involved in the patients mm -hmm. and it would just bring her down. And she had some substance issues in, in the past. And she, I mean, I'm talking to somebody that's in the understandable. I mean, so right. it's, it all makes sense, right? You know, right. If, and if you don't know you're an empath, this is my problem in nursing. I did not know that that was what I was. Mm. So I would be going in every day and feeling everything from everyone and wondering why I felt like shit at the end of the day, yep. you know, like mm -hmm. why I, yeah. I mean, you know, other people would be exhausted for like, I was like depleted to the, to the 10th. Like I would just go home and I would sleep because I was just like, Oh my God. And I have to go do that again. So I can, I, I mean, good for her at least to, you know, find that, that pattern that works for her. I mean, I would, but she still won't admit like, that she's an empath. I'm like, don't you get what's going on here? I know I would, I would really, really, really encourage her to work on, discerning what are her emotions and what are her patient's emotions and feelings. And I mean, you know, but there's, there's that part of you that thinks, well, if I do that, then I'm not going to be as good at what I do. It's like your superpower because, will go away. Yes, it is. It, it <laughs> yeah. truly is. It truly is a superpower. Right. Hundred, it, it is a hundred percent. And 
but you can still have the superpower. That's the thing. You can still have the superpower and not kill yourself every day. Like yeah. it, it is possible. A managed superpower. And yes. I talked to psychics, like legit people that have something, I don't know what it is, but they say, I turn it off. I, you know, I go into a mm -hmm. store, I'm, I'm shut down. I'm not paying. But a lot of people who are empaths, like in the medical field, don't even know that they are and don't can't yeah, figure. So they're just open wide. They're open wide receivers, and it's yeah. like all comers. Just yeah. come at me, bring it on. I want to take on the world and make everything better. No, 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 no. Hundred yeah, percent. It's not your job to solve the world's problems. It is not your job to make everyone feel all nice and rosy and comfy. Not. Yep. And then you you went into health issues. She has digestion issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we're out of time. Uh, okay. Like fast. <laughs> Super fast. Um, tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, aside from the massage part, you can do all of this virtu virtually. Correct. The Reiki, the energy healing, uh, the life coaching, holistic coaching, which we didn't even dig deep into. But you do all of that. How do we find you? Okay. So if you want to email me, it's lifelistening44 at gmail.com. If you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram, catfritz71, K-A-T-F-R-I-T-Z 71. And if you want to look at my look into me more, uh, my website is life-listening.com. I love the name of your business, your practice, you. because it says everything. Life is listening. Yeah. And we have to listen to it. And uh, it was great. Katrina, great having you on here. Really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward next time we get together. Great. I am too. Thanks. We'll be right back. Okay, okay. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.